Well, they did run it once in oh, one of the DK's games that they beat. Yeah, they ran it once in one of the games that they played against uh, SG. They also lost to SG in the upper bracket finals, but they won the grand finals with an IO uh, and losing with it once. So it's something they've been playing recently. Um, unfortunately, I didn't know that. Uh, thankfully, they're here. They're they're ready to show me that I know absolutely nothing about Dota, which I'm always excited about. Just like Kokori showed me, even though I didn't like their draft, they ended up just popping off, especially on uh, Vitaly in the off lane there. Got the Oracle next. There's a lot of save between these two heroes, but not a lot of lockdown. I yeah. feel like if you need a, a stun between your position four and your position five, so this might be an IO mid. I was gonna say, what's the chance that this is just core IO? Uh, because if you're Five if you're seconds. Arkosh Gaming and you see, you know, Oracle, IO, you need to pick stuff that just runs at this lineup, right? You need to pick stuff that can constantly fight and get on top of these heroes. But right now you have Hoodwink and Viper. Like, Viper kind of can, but he needs an offlaner that really plays aggressively. Yeah. Um, Unless hmm. he's the offlaner, then you pick an aggressive mid lane, but... <laughs> uh. I don't think they'll run... I think they'll probably run the Viper as a uh, mid laner. Once in a while, you see it on position five. Uh, I know when they had um, Owie on the team uh, for the qualifiers, me and you were casting that together. I Wait, no. We weren't casting that together. That was Kmart. Yeah, I don't think I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't there for that one. Unfortunate. I remember it is you, okay? Shout out to Kmart, by the way. <laughs> I don't mean to be toxic. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think I was casting one with Kmart. I was watching uh, Aoi position five Viper, but you know they've changed to Cerberus here. I doubt his performance is going to be anything even close to uh, how Aoi did, uh, despite the fact they did end up doing uh, fairly well in that game. Got a bit of reserve time left. We need to start revealing a bit more with their draft. We'll probably figure out where this Viper goes uh, after we see this next pick here, but Given the fact they're playing against Oracle and uh, Io, I think they'll probably pick somebody who builds a, uh, a Shiva's Guard who can deal with Hero Heal a little bit. Ancient Apparition has already been banned out in the first phase, so I think no ping plan of going with this from the very start. Yeah, it seems like that, for sure. I'm mm -hmm. with you. They banned out three Eye of Scotty carriers after that, actually. They grabbed the Pudge. I think that's what they're going to do here. They're going to get the Aegon Scepter on Pudge uh, and have the Rot, which uh, ends up uh, reducing Hero Healing on it. Don't get me wrong. That's a mechanic a lot of people forget about. It actually it does that. It amplifies the damage by a lot and ends up reducing hero healing, so it does feel pretty good. Going for the same King next. I honestly did not think that they would be picking the Pudge. I will, it is one of my absolute favorite heroes. I love this hero tremendously. But, uh, yeah, this is not a, not a, typically not a very successful hero, I would say, in, in the professional Dota scene. Did you go ahead and mm -hmm. respond up with Lashrank? That's probably going to be Canis Vulpus' hero in the safe lane, if I had to guess. Pale Horse plays that one or, as well. I'm sorry, Pale Horse in the safe lane. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be Canis Vulpus. Yeah, uh, I think we had an interview Radiant with uh, the coach of Arkosh, the sixth man, and he said that uh, for Pale Horse, it's like his spirit animal, yeah. the Leshrac, right? Nice. That makes sense. Yeah. You were there for that one. Was I? I don't even remember. It's fine. It was an Arkosh game. It's not worth remembering. I see, I see. You know, it's just uh, low skill stuff. Uh, Gremolo making weird all chat. You can't even make out what he's Ten saying half seconds. the time. Um, you know, low skill plays out of uh, just Five everyone. Keenis Vulpes, especially Ray. given the fact he's playing on a track pad, just loses mid most of the time. What can you do? I think it's the smell that gets to everyone on the team. But <clears throat> we'll see what this last uh, ban out here is on uh, No Ping. They've gotten rid of the anti mage. Producer's already banned out. A little bit weird to see the anti mage ban last here. I think it's possible they... Well, Stormsphere would have been the first thing that came to mind, but uh, they've already banned that out on Arkosh. They get rid of the Sven next. What do you think they plan on grabbing as their uh, their mid laner here? On the side of no ping? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of good options into the Viper, unfortunately. Yeah. Unless uh, it's an IO mid and going to be something else on the four, right? Yeah, but that sounds pretty bad. Ember Spirit. They will go ahead and take Ember. So it is going to be the support Viper in the five position. Mm -hmm. Take a little bit of... I, mean, I guess may, maybe Aoi gave him a little bit of a lesson before he uh, was rudely kicked off the team. They showed Ten him how good five-position Viper can be. 
Uh, I hope not. I absolutely Five. hate this. I I hate it even more when it shows up in my pubs. Uh, I actually ended up losing the qualifiers for this tournament uh, on Team Dying. Shout out to my teammates, uh, Panders, Mr. V, Captain Canuck, and Rambo, by the way. Uh, we got eliminated by Team Anxiety One on the, the first teams. round. Yeah. Yeah. One of the <laughs> Unfortunate best stuff. You know? was hoping to get to the second round, but sometimes you just lose the first round in like 23 minutes. What can you do? Just be better, probably. <laughs> <laughs> can i get another play by play caster is that possible is this thing on uh, <laughs> it's too easy sometimes uh all right we got uh last year coming up no it's also possible they plan on running the sand king in the mid lane uh, against the ever spirit i'm curious as to how that one goes it's something that uh people in south america have run mini from uh Bino mistas was running this one mm-hmm uh, actually, and it actually it. ran it pretty successfully. Yeah. You know what? No ping actually has done it as well. Like Dark Mago has played at mid lane. Definitely have mm -hmm. seen that before. So I'm curious if that's what they want to go for here and then pick a you know different off laner. Yeah, no, but there's a tiny. tiny. There it is. Wait, we don't know this yet. It could go anywhere. But it's usually a Dark Mago. It's usually hero. Dark yeah. Mago's hero, yeah. That's something that he's very comfortable playing. Mm -hmm. So there we are. The list as we see it is going to be Cerberus the dog. Gonna pick up a pair of wings, play the Viper. Um, we've got uh, Crow, Gremlo, Pale Horse, Candice Vulpus there rounding out their heroes. Um, really excited for No Ping's lineup here. I I'm curious to see how this works. You you did point out very earlier, like they just have zero lockdown off of these supports. It is just an all in heal strat here um, to keep this Luna alive. We'll see how that goes. It's uh, a little bit strange, definitely. Um, and I think Pudge is actually like a pretty decent response to heroes like Oracle because it forces Oracle to have to get like a blink dagger because if someone gets hooked out of position, you're usually not going to be there to be able to save them. Yeah, that's right. Uh, my uh, only concern is like everything you do is going to be very telegraphed on uh, no ping. Like again, when you don't have stuns on Oracle or uh, the Wisp here, you like you have just have to watch out for where whenever a tiny or sand king are going to be rotating and you can just kind of get back for a little bit based on that like even if supports aren't showing you aren't really in any threat because there's no hard lockdown on them right uh so because of that the game might be kind of easy on our caution they've got like decent saves in the form of being able to disengage with uh hoodwinker being able to cook somebody out on pudge uh hit him with the uh dismember but the agnum shard is only 1400 gold and it is way too good of a save it's so good dude you get a aether lens and you're just like, ah, oh, hero just vanished. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. Although I uh, don't have much faith in Gremlo to land any of these skill shots. I'm going to be real with you. A little bit of a pause. That would be a perfect time to take a look at the odds for the game. So let's see where we're at right now. Um, Arkosh, definitely not favored favorite here. It uh, looks like people have a little bit more faith in oh, no I ping. And based, oh, uh, I, I think, off of seeing it. just a pudge in the draft, you're probably going to lean a little bit more oh, towards no I ping. Makes sense to me, enough. Shame. Uh, I think uh, no ping is favored regardless Shame. coming into this game. After all, Shame. one of the people are playing on a track. I mean, <laughs> it's unsurprising who the uh, the favorites are here. And Cerebus, I don't think this guy's ever played a professional match of Dota 2 before. To be honest, it's not that surprising. Um, anytime, you know, Arkosh needs to replace one of their players, right? I've been told they have to gather for a summoning uh, and they basically take a new soul um, and use that soul as a, they trap it inside a player's body. And obviously, uh, this one, luckily, gets to be a dog. So that's a pretty cool living. They haven't canceled them for uh, performing these sacrifice rituals yet uh it's mostly off off the uh social media right. sphere i think you know i imagine if valve caught wind of this they would be banned immediately yeah most likely mm -hmm. but you know it's unlikely that uh valve is paying attention to things arkosh are doing if we still haven't gotten a patch yet i mean let's be real here yo have uh you seen uh gremlo's <laughs> items hmm? he does this uh, every game on pudge he just doesn't buy items nope he just goes zero items Gets bounty runes, kills one creep, and buys a ring of hell. He doesn't buy a helm of iron, Will. Nope, he just buys a ring of hell. And then gets he doesn't a want to, He doesn't want to spend a little bit of extra gold for the six armor. But that doesn't build into Vanguard. I mean, I suppose. It is very good, though. Yeah, Building the, the Crimson Guard. You could go Crimson Guard. 
but man probably doesn't know about armor values and armor reduction i'm uh, giving him a little bit too much credit i imagine i hope he goes for his ring of health shame. smile shame 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 all right finally unpaused here we see matthew and angel head to the top side of the map while the entire lineup here of arkosh start to beeline it to the dire triangle also known as the trungle i'm gonna keep saying it i don't care what anyone says <laughs> Dark Mago? He's trying to scout the wards, not seeing it quite yet, so he knows there's nothing here in the mid lane. He did get a nice ward aggressively on the other high ground, which is always really valuable. Just a couple tree cuts here actually allows him to place a ward up on uh, that camp. That's a really good ward. This one very hardly ever gets dewarded. I'll be very happy about that. Neff, I uh, can't hear you, brother. Yeah, I will say uh, was, there's a bit of all chat going on. I don't know if you caught it. Oh, yeah, I was watching a little bit of it. Yeah, I uh, don't know if... Uh, I gotta give him a little bit of credit. I don't think Keenus Volp has lost a single DPC match on his Ember Spirit. Nope, I don't think he did either. Yeah. Well, Oscar's taking a ton of damage. Cerberus does not want to commit all these poison attacks. Well, I guess he's going to. He's gonna try and jump down to the low ground, but he doesn't make it behind the tree. He's gonna take down to the five poison and stacks there, and Cerberus gets first blood. The new players turning out pretty good so far. Who would have guessed? And that's every dog has his day. That's true. It's He's got day. a bassy now. That's going to be super strong for the lane. Not bad. Plus, who uh, sent it out to himself, though? Is Curry even sitting? Oh, yeah, it's being sent out now. I mean, it, you have, when you have a lot of mana between uh, the Leshrac and the Viper here, it is going to make this lane super difficult for Oscar to get near the creeps. You're just going to get a poison attack every time you want to get close. You are able to dispel the stacks on uh, Oracle with the Fortune's End. Like usually when you build up three stacks, he'll go ahead and he'll just purge it off of them. But uh, it's still going to be really easy when you have that extra mana from the Ring of Basilius to work with here. Yeah, absolutely. And there it is, Gremlin with his good old Ring of Health 11 <laughs> regen now, just as he sits in the lane. Cerberus becomes very strong on Viper once you get to level 3. Uh, but like you said, the fact that you can constantly purge off... Wait, what? Yep. Just got clicked down by the Hoodwink there. Acorn Shot ended up doing 200 damage. Okay. That, I feel like, shouldn't have happened. But it did. It did, though. All right, there we go. Bottom lane. And a boo. Falling quite low. Four stacks on him right now, trying to heal up through the trees. Pale Horse chasing after him. Doesn't guess correctly as he jumps south. Salves up as well. Pandaboo should be fine. Pale Horse missing a lot of creeps. Yep. I'm not sure Oscar's going to be fine, no, though. Not at all. Cerberus chasing him down. You can only save one hero. Grevo wants Matthew. Finds him top lane. A bushback comes out. Are they going to kill both of them? He gets that off just in time. Pops one a fairy fire. Unbelievable. Double kill for Crow in the top lane. That's going to be a walk of shame for the Luna. This isn't right. They There's can't something keep going on here. Yeah. They can't. Five. Oh, oh God. No. He's found Matthew. All right. He's out. He's fine. You're a I'm a little bit worried for Matthew here. He seems uh, out of his element. Five kills. 2K net worth advantage at two minutes. And honestly, Ember in the mid lane does have to be a little bit careful of just the harassment from the tiny, but he can constantly <laughs> shove with these uh, flame guards. He's got. Fairy Fire as well as a couple bottle charges available and a three minute bounty should allow him to refill that one more time. Yeah. He will have to walk out of the lane though, so he's gonna miss a little bit of XP for this. Actually, he stays around. He's gonna try to stack the camp up. I think he's slightly off the mark though. That's a, uh, you know, the trackpad gameplay showing for you. You guys, you don't need to play Dota on the Steam Yo, Deck. Wow. Even if you have Slacks, your manager, you manage to get hold of one a little bit early. When you're playing professional games, please don't use an analog stick and four buttons. You can use a mouse and keyboard. You can plug them in and do it. Yeah, that's a good, that's great advice, honestly, for anyone. I know uh, that uh, Gabe was testing Dota on this, but really not a uh, Steam Deck game. Let's be real here. 
Um, I will say this, these lane setups are such classic NA. Like, just picking this safe lane of Lashrak Viper, like, very few heroes can actually just lane into this at all. And they're just doing such a good job at just harassing this down and, and, and securing the lane for, for their safe lane Lashrak, right? Um, and that's just like an NA staple, right? Always drafting and playing for the lanes. Okay, it's diving on uh, Dark Mago into the tower and it might just go down here. Ooh, needs the mana for a slide of fist, but he doesn't get it. And Canis Volpus is just getting crushed by the tower. He dies. He's dead. <laughs> get off oh, the Steam no. Deck, kid. And a good old tip from Dark Mago. The hook top lane, though, the IO, it TP'd. Can they finish off Angel in time? He will survive. V Honestly, a pretty bold TP to the tower there. But he will make it out. Io, does he have a salve? He does not. Auto lane. Gonna... You have to wait for a minute. Oscar in trouble. He does have uh, Fortune's End, though, so he's going to be fine. Yeah. It's going to be close. This game is uh, a lot of action happening so far. They managed to find, find one kill, and uh, they haven't really increased the net worth lead from 2k uh, anymore. To oh, no, Matthew! Oh, perfect time bushwhack from Crow as well. They get the kill on Io once again. Gremlo. This guy's a fisherman, dude. He's hitting everything. There's no one to here to help Angel. No, Nobody's coming. He is just completely stuck, and Gremlo's gonna walk in for another flesh keep stack. Dark Mago TP's up. They are seven and one here on Arkosh. Dark Mago, yes, he's got the avalanche, the toss, sending Gremlo under tower, but he's pretty tanky. He's got this uh, chainmail already completed. He doesn't seem to really care. You force the tiny top for nothing. Well, maybe not for nothing as Canis Volpus is coming up, maybe trying to punish this rotation. He's going to move back underneath the tower. Up for the hook. There it is. The setup. Oh, they actually missed the Buswack as a result. And now Dark Mago will survive with 40 HP. A little bit of miscommunication there on the side of Arkosh. Yeah. Crow going to try to snipe this uh, tiny on the back side of the fight, but is forced to walk away. Matthew here healing Dark Mega up, and now he's forced to walk back lane. But he lost a lot of time doing this. He did. And he can't heal up like the Ember can, right? Ember just drops a spirit, comes right back top. Now they're looking for Angel. He just walks in for the rod, and they get the dismember. Angel is checked out of this game, man. How many deaths is that? That's four deaths on the Luna. Yeah, I mean, the only saving grace here is the fact that you don't have a catapult up anymore. Otherwise, the tower would, uh, I think, just fall from this three-man rotation up here. But Gainus, he's got corrosion. himself an over corrosion. Yeah. He's just going to stick up here. Right click down this tower. None of these lanes going that well for them. I mean, they're doing okay here in the bottom lane, but uh, Kale Horse has a lot of farms himself. He's sitting at second the net worth at 2.7k. Yeah, they're going really well. Yeah, they get the tower. That orb of corrosion damage really does add up. And after that, your top net worth is the Pudge offlane, who has Phase Boots, Ring of Health. Going for a Hood of Defiance now, ready to go on Courier. All right. No pain can stop holding back now. I know that they've been going easy on him. They feel bad for Arkosh. They're chained to desks. Uh, I think Slacks takes all their prize pool money. Or, uh, I think, no, Candace Volpa spends it all on furry art. My mistake. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, no, no ping needs to eat, too. They don't need to give up these wins to them. I mean, Angel is, like, barely level four on this Luna. I mean, net worth-wise, 1,800 net worth. Almost 1,900, but, like, you are really struggling. And there's not really, like, anything you can do to go farm these stacks on the dire side of the, of the jungle, right? Like, this triangle... This is just going to go the way of, of like, Sand King or Tiny, right? Like, they cannot wait for the Luna to get to there. It's going to take way too long. Because if you wait, it'll be Pale Horse who just goes and cleans them up. Yeah. Speaking of Sand King. Dark Mago going to get uh... scouted. Hans Volpus walks right in. Kind of baiting this, honestly. Drops a remnant down to the low ground. He's going to be all right. Oh, well, his courier's not all right. They lose Sand King at the same time inside the jungle. He's trying to pull the creep camps and farm up uh, the camps and uh, the creep wave at the same time. But uh, ended up giving himself away. Goes down to Pale Horse and uh, Crow here. Is he going to get a second courier? There's no way, right? Okay. Yeah, he's going to have that Hooded Defiance now completed on Pudge. Has a dust for good measure. 
Make sure that if the Sand King wants to come top, he's not going to be able to just freely sit in the lane. But Dark Mago, I mean, he's not really getting a lot done here on this Tiny. One of the things that uh, Dark Mago does really well as a mid laner is he's almost always one of the most farmed heroes in the game. Like, constantly. Avalanche toss. He goes for Crow. Pops the Fairy Fire. Save, but a hook from Gremlo sets up another kill. I'm, uh, I'm not pleased to see it. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> Ends up losing so much time doing those rotations. Tried to slow down Kane's Bulbs' in the game, then his own is suffering for it. And bottom lane, Pale Horse is freely pushing this tower. He doesn't have Edict at the moment, but can put a lot of damage out with this next wave as they're already threatening the mid one. Again, this Orb of Corrosion damage, it adds up so fast onto these towers. So for three heroes to the mid lane, this should be easy pickings here for Pale Horse bottom. Is, uh, at the very least, Oscar's going to be able to sit here in front of this tower and stop them from defending, but they're moving their way to Angel again. If he goes down again, he's already 0 and 4. Bushwhacks on the mark. Hook comes out. He tries to capture it on the side of that IO, but it's not going to be enough. He doesn't have mana for the dismember, but if he's going to stay on top of him, he might get the kill. He will not. They will maybe settle for this IO, but they turn around. Everyone here from the side of Noping, they finally punish the Pudge. Great play there. Coming out from Noping, responding to that Luna. Yep, and they'll be able to take out all these stacks that they've uh, far, or built up now, finally. Has Two points. So much played. gold and XP going their way. Wait, uh, Pale Horse just died just mid? All right, I have, uh, caution shambles. Yeah, it looks like he was diving the tower or something like that. I'm looking at this death recap. I, uh, I missed that one. It looked like it was all physical, but he definitely took magical. I think that one's just busted. It was just trying to kill the Tiny, I guess, and Tiny mm. just avatossed him at low HP. Ground low, mid lane, the hook off. Finds the Sand King. He can Brawl Strike up onto the high ground. They pop the dust. The damage not going to be there to finish it off. Hoodwink is really your, your follow-up for that, right? Right, they're bringing it back. They're bringing it back. Only a 2k net worth advantage for Arkosh now. They haven't lost mid-tower yet. Pale Horse really um, wants it. I'm breathing in that the, the thing is, like, Pandaboo is still not level 6, so that False Promise is not going to be there to save you. They do see Oscar on the backside. Dark Mago doesn't have Blink yet either. When that tower goes down. Oscar misses on that Burrow Strike. And now all three Tier 1 towers have fallen, which gives No Ping a lot less comfort on the map right now. It's going to be pretty easy for them to evade, and they have great heroes forward as well. Ember, uh, Pudge, and uh, Hoodwink. All very good at uh, pressuring the enemies when those towers are gone, especially. Oh no, he finds them. No, Io was trying to go for a relocate to bring Angel bottom, but the hook took him too far away. And now Io, maybe he brings back the Sand King? No, I think Matthew has probably accepted his death here. Another try to get to the creep wave. into a chain. Too far away, unfortunately. There's nothing that they're able to do. I'll be honest, left. I love watching me some Pudge gameplay. This is this is my favorite thing ever. Yeah. Not a. Uh, I'm sorry. Horse despised what? the neutral creeps. Uh, he was trying to stack and ended up getting himself killed. Uh, exactly what I expect out of Arkosh. This is them looking more like in their proper form here. He literally. Okay. Did he just have no HP? He just yeah. He took 1,400 damage from neutrals. All right. You know, sometimes you just die uh, farming neutral camp. Mm -hmm. These guys were a direct invite to the close qualifiers. Uh, you know who's not going to die taking these ancients? Uh, Angel, because uh, he's not, you know, he, he pays a lot more attention to his health bar. Now, I know what you're saying. He's got help there from the IO, but, you know, these are bootstraps almost. <laughs> it's a small loan of $1 million from this IO. <laughs> uh. All right. Oscar's got his blink dagger done, by the way. You know, Angel had one of the worst starts to this game, and he is about to pass everyone in net worth. He is now going to be top net worth. There it is. Sometimes you just farm 1,800 gold off of Ancient Camps. I don't know. This mask does help uh, quite a bit. It's also the build that he's got going on. The Max Lunar Blessing and Moon Glaives. This makes things so quick for him. Also, four points overcharge, zero in spirits. Quite nice. Yeah. 
I mean, they've nerfed spirits so many times. It does feel pretty bad to put the points into them. You have first damage, sure, but you basically only get it if you're going mid lane, right? Yeah. And even then, mid lane Io is like dead now since you have to farm like for 20 minutes to be useful. Oh, he tried to block the ancients there on Kane as well, this, but doesn't make it in time. Bottom lane, relocate coming in. Cerberus in some trouble. Able to pop out that Viper Strike, but can't imagine he survives this, can he? No uh, chance, way no. too much damage. Kane's Wolves does get the uh, the Oracle though, so Mid one lane? for one trade. Okay, that's a big they end one. up losing Dark Mega as well. Three heroes on top of him. Very little he's able to do. He almost brings down Crow at the same time. But uh, Kans Volpus gets like free reign of this game. He gets to play so aggressive on the fact that you don't have any stuns on the position four or five. Yeah, it's pretty much going to be the uh, blink stun from Oscar or like the blink avatos from Dark Mago, which he doesn't actually have his blink quite yet. He has been very shut down. The thing is, is like you only have a 1k gold lead here on the side of Arkosh, and you don't really have a good counter to the Luna. At least in my opinion. Like, I don't know what you do when Angel has like BKB Manta. Like, I, I don't know how you ever kill this guy. I mean, you're always gonna be able to throw like a Viper Strike guy to him to slow him down. I was curious as to where that was. Looks like there's a small engagement in the top lane. You can do some damage here, but, you know, a BKB does feel a lot better to get early on in Luna ever since they made that change from uh, 9 to 6, from uh, 10 to 5 like it was before, and the Manta style feeling a lot better. Luna's just better hero overall now because of how they change items around. So they will struggle a little bit once she manages to get that one done. Um, and, yeah, she's got it queued up as her next item now. Doesn't even want to stop to finish up that Manta style before she goes for this. Hey, there's no reason to, right? I mean, you, you're getting amplified so fast in your net worth just because of this io you don't really need the manta style it doesn't give you any extra survivability if you have it it's mostly you need it oh hook Autumn. comes out finds oscar they get that dismember right away matthew trying to make it in time as well as panda hands up jumping up to the high ground there's the avalanche the toss they're taking him down the epicenter as well so much damage coming in here gremlo able to survive for now but pale horse on the backside to be able to push them out of the relocate takes them to the other side of the map and it's going to start tilting back the other way here as two fall and it's about to be dark mago as well potentially blink in one can he get out slight on the mark continuing to damage him but oh these auto attacks just barely breaking these blink daggers here on the tiny isle comes back in tries to save him he's a bushwhack now he might die as well instead of three it's going to be four Double kill for Kane's Volpus, thanks to this DD rune. Become peace. Uh, I gotta say, that was uh, pretty smooth there by Kane's Volpus. He kept that blink digger off of cooldown each time just before it went off. I think it was like 0.1 second timing each time. That was uh, very close otherwise. Well played by him. I'll give it up for Kane's once in a while. Don't tell him you said that. No. He'll, he'll literally never let you live it down. No. <laughs> Uh, no, they're gonna go back to the jungle, use this opportunity to uh, increase that net worth lead a little bit. Again, when you have control of the map like this, you still have all of your towers standing. Uh, you get to dictate the uh, pace of this game. I don't think they can blow up Gremlo here. He's got too much HP, so instead they go for Crow. Yeah, why not? It's that simple. Oh, he finds Pandamu though, and he just threw his whole spell kit. However, all of their damage is magical, so it's, it takes him a little bit to get Pandamu there. The lesson yeah. was run. Dark Mago's looking for more. He can't kill Kane's Volpus. No. Cerberus has a mech. All right, that's pretty nice. That's an item. Yeah, pretty hard to go on here. Arkansh knows the evasion up on that hill. It looks like that's the next place they want to go. Invade, get into their triangle. Arkosh's game plan is pretty much ignore the Luna, kill everyone else, if I'm not mistaken, right? It's like, they don't really have any other options. Fair, but uh, they're going to have to deal with this Luna soon. Luna's going to be knocking on your door once your BKB is complete. Looking bottom throw. Uh, this here, Bushwhack comes out. Io not quite close enough, but will go ahead and be able to heal him up here now. They do go ahead and blow up the backside of the fight there, and Canis Vulpus will be forced to leave. Quick two kills going the way of Oscar thanks to the epicenter. And they'll finally be able to get a tier one tower here. So, a little bit of map control finally going back their way. Net worth evens out. Does it not quite go in the favor of no ping here? But for the first time in the game, it's uh, relatively even. And Angel has a BKB. Mm -hmm. 
they've lost their lead finally. 19 to 10. Despite that, no ping has managed to even things out. Pale Horse finishes up the Kai Assange. A very good item, but again, he doesn't have kill threat on this Luna, I don't think. On the backside, Slide Chains comes out. Hook pulls Tiny in far. Canceling. <laughs> yeah, there's just no engagement. It's just Angel with that Eclipse. Pale Horse just walks on in, trying to bring down the Tiny, but Panadu is here. He's got to focus down these supports. He's able to save Angel. The BKB comes out. Pale Horse just getting shredded. The toss comes through. He dies. Even going to find Kanan's Vault as he is out of mana and Cerberus as well. Four heroes going to fall here for the side of Arkosh. As they, again, I said they just, they lack damage, Nef. Yeah, that was the BKB arriving on the Luna in the middle of that team fight, saved by some amazing plays out of this Oracle. Panda Boo absolutely on point this game. And, you know, as soon as you don't do magical damage to these heroes, you're not doing anything. You were absolutely Jay. right, Ricky. Jay. Yeah, I mean, I've played a lot of Pudge in my days, Neff. Um, and if mm -hmm. there's one thing I know, it's you can win the lane and uh, just basically do nothing for the next 30 minutes. It's great. So it's, it's incredible how that yeah. works. Yeah, are you saying that is the ideal hero for Gremlo though, because he doesn't really do anything? Um, I think it's the more of like he likes he identifies mostly with Pudge than any other hero. Why do you think that is? I mean, the man eats similar diets. The man eats cat litter. I mean, I mean, what other hero in Dota would probably eat cat litter? Yeah, that's true. I can see uh, I can see the similarities. Then you point you put it that way. Looks like Oscar's DC'd from the game here, but uh, great fight there. I mean, uh, off of the back of that one, I feel like this is only going to get easier. Uh, there were some sick plays in that last team fight, though. Oscar ended up jumping in front of the uh, sharpshooter from the hoodwink, uh, so it didn't end up landing on the Luna. If the Luna goes down in that team fight there, there's absolutely no way they win it. So they had, like, uh, the Oracle keep him alive afterwards, even though it wasn't in position originally. Uh, and then the BKB arrived in the middle of the fight as well. So if Sand King doesn't block the majority of that damage by jumping in front of the Luna, I think they just end up losing that one. That's a uh, teamwork right there, baby. And that's what happens when you don't uh, constantly replace one of your players slash kick Owie. EG had to learn their lesson the hard way. And it looks like Arkosh is learning their lesson right now. Yeah, imagine kicking a TI winner from your draft. Yeah, the man's my hero. And uh, I don't know what they even did to Owie to get him to play with them, but... I played against him yesterday, actually. It was a lot of fun. Did you lose? We went 1-1. Oh, yeah. I don't believe you. Oh my god, you're so toxic. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You know I lost to Slack yesterday? That was embarrassing. That is pretty embarrassing, Neff. You shouldn't say that out loud. That I lost to Slacks? Yeah. Man, I absolutely bodied me in that game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Unlucky. At the moment, no pings. They're pretty good at keeping these lanes pushed out, right? Oscar is very strong, and he's he's pretty much impossible to kill right now for the side of Arkosh. Like, without uh, getting like a really deep hook underneath the tower, he's got a Yules. He's got himself a Hood of Defiance. This blink. Like, he's able to to kind of dodge out a lot of this damage. Looks like they're trying to collapse out onto mid, though. As Dark Mago gets the avalanche, the toss. They're going to be able to look right for Pale Horse, but there's no save as they just pick him off so easily, and they take the Tier 1 tower for good measure. Mm -hmm. Finally getting a bit more control of this map. We're just seeing the 20-minute mark now. Triangle's been taken over. 4K net worth advantage. I mean, you had a 2K net worth advantage here on Arkosh at like the two minute mark into this game. Look at these graphs here, Ricky. Yeah, nothing net surprising, worth honestly. Win probability 75, uh, win probability for no ping right now. They got Io Luna and they have no way to slow her down. They also just don't really have a Luna counter. The lane stage, hilarious. It was a lot of fun to watch. Hoodwink caught out. There's going to be the Yules to keep her in place as the rest of the team comes on over and they pick her off for the use of their Angel. Now going to back up for the Shard. He's got the Chrysalis completed and now the Lucent Beam Span will begin. Yeah, they will be able to... Well, things will be a little bit easier once they complete a couple of items here on the side of uh, Arkosh. Again, working on this, a BKB on Gremlo. If he has an Egg in him Shard, that's going to be an excellent save and uh, Game of Vulp is still working on his BKB. It's a lot of magical damage coming oh. out from there. Oh my god, beautiful toss, but not enough damage, unfortunately. 
I was I was saying oh because uh, Aoi tried to like wave cut, but a courier <laughs> flew over him. Any high ground missed the courier. <laughs> Who? Owie on the. Uh, wait, sorry, I don't know why I keep saying Owie. kicked Owie. About it. Yeah, I'm thinking of Owie. Um, too soon, man. Too soon. I know you, you think back to the good days of uh, Owie playing on Arkosh, but uh, the man's gone. There's nothing respectable about this team anymore. I still can't believe it, dude. It just makes no sense. That's <laughs> what I said at 50 i5. <laughs> Oscar on the Sand King channeling. Uh, like pump faking this epicenter. He was looking to maybe jump on and cancel up us there, but at the tier 2 tower is a little bit bold. Old a pot pale horse once again. Hook is not going to be enough to save him. Gremlo doesn't have the shard yet either. He has the BKB, hasn't channeled, and now interrupts that uh, dismember right away. Maybe they can take down Oscar. There's going to be able to toss these heroes around. They buy back on Pale Horse, but he's just dead immediately once again. They even buy back on Kane's Volpus. He's right back into the fight, but what do they have? Absolutely nothing. They do need, they're sitting pretty low. They'll heal up with this uh, Io and this Oracle here. <laughs> But they still are capable of pumping out a lot of damage. The BKB is on cooldown on Pudge, and he looks like he doesn't want to go in because of this. He'll be able to trade for the Tiny here, but that is a double dieback on both of your cores. And now Io, I mean, is he really in that much trouble? Yeah, he is. he's in a lot of trouble, actually. He's got a, uh, no way out. <laughs> that auto attack should finish him up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, he's dead. Nice snipe from Crow there. Let's get down, I'm taking the shot. And Grumlo doesn't get down. <laughs> he runs at them. Clean, uh, clean team fight there. I mean, they lost two heroes on dieback at the end of that one. That's going to slow down Pale Horse and uh, Candace Vulpus' games quite a bit. But do you manage to take down the uh, Tiny and uh, the Io there? They need a couple more. I mean, the BKB made a massive difference on Pudge in that last team fight. Uh, I don't think Oscar saw that he had that. He ended up initiating onto him with the epicenter. He didn't hit any of the other heroes with it, and then immediately just pops the BKB on Gremlo. He managed to survive the majority of that team fight. No. I'm uh, looking at a couple items that I could turn this around, but again, BKB is the biggest one. They're working on on Keenan's Volpus, but his game has just slowed down so much post laning phase. He was popping off at the start, then all of a sudden they managed to find a couple of kills onto him and his team, and he hasn't managed to farm up the jungle or anything like that since. Yeah, this is what I was worried about. Like, they, like they He really likes this Lesh, I guess, but your team just feels so poor. Like, look at the net worth distribution. You don't really have a farming core who's accelerating. It's just everyone's kind of got a couple items, but then you look at this Luna who's just four slotted with a BKB and an Isle Binder. They will get the hook, brings her really far back. They will get the BKB off with the rest of the team. Maybe they can keep him alive and yeah, doesn't even have to pop the false promise there. Full heal back onto the top. And it's looking for the backside, trying to get on top of these supports. There's going to be the epicenter. Pale Horse just gets beat down as well. Canis Vulpus cannot even bring down the Oracles. He's forced away. Full cool comma collected that entire team fight. They're going to waste a lot of time chasing uh, Canis Vulpus here. I'm not sure they're going to be able to get their hands on him. Blink Dagger is up in five seconds. It might be able to gap the distance here. The losing feed. Nice Lucid dodge. Beam spam is some uh, dumb stuff, I'll be honest. Yeah, the uh, 2.5 second cooldown, uh, 0.8 second stun. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. He also, uh, you know, crit him for 800 back to back. So that was pretty neat. Buys them a bit of time, but uh, he does bring them pretty close to Roche, but so he's going to take Roche off of this one. Arcock backs against the wall. 9k net worth disadvantage here. Now 23 to 23. Canis Vulpus isn't any closer to this uh, BKB that he was like six, seven minutes ago. He just died again and again. Is uh, ended up having to spend buyback as well. This, I don't think you actually want to grab Sand King here. You don't have any damage. You don't have any damage like ever on the side of Arkosh. Like you can get these. Okay, Gremlo is just dead to Glaives, I think. He pops yeah. the BKB, but it doesn't matter. One more Glaive. Nah, it's just gonna get picked off there by Pandaboo. He baited himself there. You don't actually want to hook these uh, enemies, not with the majority of your team down. They've got Aegis up right now anyways. And it looks like because uh, Gremlo's dead, they're going to walk up high ground here. 
No I buyback available either. I don't know who you ever go on if you're Arkosh, right? Like, say you hook any hero here, what best case Orko. scenario, you get them to like half HP and they force like IO relocate or something? Positioning on the noping here is really good. It feels like they can never get onto Panda Boo or uh, Matthew. Oh, and they are going to do the exact opposite as they burst down Crow here. Maybe able to get topped off by that uh, mech there. And continuing the push here on the mid lane tower as they take the range barracks and now the melee. Oh, Viper tossed back by Dark Mago. Very easy. Arkosh just look broken, man. They don't know what to do here. They're grasping for straws as Dark Mango's grasping for the enemy arrows. Toss them right back in. They get the dismember. But Luna protected by Pandemu once again as they're going to turn on the aggression. Great two man burrow strike into the eclipse. Toss back on Kreblo. Someone get them out of the game. GG's are dropped. Arkosh go down here in game number one. Despite the massive lead, they end up losing that one. Uh, service, you know, he just can't pop off like Aoi can, so. Dog is down. I mean, it makes sense to me, man. Uh, just couldn't keep up with things. Couldn't stay on his leash to arrive on the game in time, apparently. What was the official word that we got? Is uh, why our was a bit late to the lobby again? Uh, yeah, we were told that uh, Cerberus was like going for a walk with Slacks, and he managed to get off the leash to go play in a pond full of ducks. And uh, by the time Slacks finally wrangled him in, uh, they were late. Just uh, classic crazy. Arkosh stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. But uh, amazing comeback there from No Ping. It felt kind of hopeless for a little while. They'd lost basically all the lanes. I mean, Keenus Volbus, he did end up dying to Dark Mago there. But I think, yeah, they came out of the laning phase. Look at the player net worth and whatnot. Top two heroes, like, significantly. It's up by, like, almost 1,000 gold on each of them on uh, Leshrac and Ember Spear. Then... A couple of good plays after they get the Blink Dagger done on Oscar, they get the BKB done on Luna, they didn't have the damage to take down the no-ping heroes anymore. So, showing why they were champions of uh, the Mobius Bet tournament just uh, yesterday, doing a great job in their opening here in the Loop Bet Pro Series 7. Yeah, that was a real sick game from them, honestly, and uh, we'll see what Arkosh do if they want to come back to the drawing board with a little bit of a different draft here. Um, I'm not super sold on the pudge. It was hilarious to watch for the first 10 minutes. And then after that, you kind of just, you, you're just sad. You know, he hooks someone, then you just die or you like bait your team into a bad fight and uh, no ping. Um, man, the, the amount of efficiency they got out from the stacks at this game was ridiculous. Like this, this Luna was like level four at like eight and a half, nine minutes into the game. Um, and then suddenly, you know, one pick off on Gremlo, she's able to clear out the entire set of stacks thanks to the IO and uh, she was top net worth. You know, just like, it's that, it's that simple, Neff. It's just that easy. But uh, that's all it for uh, this first game here. I can't wait for No Pain to take a quick 2-0, put these demons in their place, but uh, we're going to take a short break, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. We'll see y'all in game number two here uh, between Arkosh and No Ping. Uh, stay tuned. We'll see you then. <laughs> 